Hi friends, I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor at Central United Methodist Church right here in Waterford, Michigan. We are studying our mission statement for our church, connecting with God, connecting with others, changing our world with Christ's love for these uh, uh, three weeks. We're in the second week of really focusing the second week on that second phrase of our mission statement, connecting with others. Last week we considered uh, connecting with God. This week we're, con we're considering what does it mean to connect with others. So I'd like to read the scripture that was read on Sunday during our worship service as we um, thought about uh, what it meant, what it means to connect with others. It was also our welcome back, our rally day Sunday and a block party. We had some, some, some guests who came and were part of our festivities. We had a bounce house. We had a cornhole tournament. We had games for the kids to play. We had a slip and slide. The weather was absolutely gorgeous. We had kids excuse me, in their bathing suits and in their clothes, just you know, shooting down the, the hill in the back of our church, getting all wet and having a great time. It was a fabulous day and the food was good. We grilled up hamburgers and hot dogs, provided those meats and people brought uh, uh, sides and, uh, and desserts. And we just had a really great day. And uh, and the worship service, I, I would say, that was was really wonderful. We had our full choir, and uh, I was part of a quartet with the rest of the staff. That was so much fun. It was really a good time. But let's get on with the scripture for today. I'm reading from the 15th chapter of John's Gospel, and I'm reading verses 9 through uh, 17. Let me read this to you. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for, another, for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Love that scripture. Absolutely love that scripture. I want you to meditate just a bit on verse 15, uh, when, when, or excuse me, verse 13, when John says, no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Um, it's an important, uh, it's an important uh, piece of this scripture. Um, and I, and I taught you a little bit about uh, the Greek word for love, which is philio, is a form of the word translated as friend, which is philos. So in Greek, uh, a friend is literally one who is loved. If you are a friend of Jesus, then you have received Jesus' love. You have embraced Jesus' love. If you are a friend to, if we are friends with each other, then we are, are people who love each other. We are bound together by love for one another that is inspired by Christ's love for each of us. So I want you to think about your friendships. I want you to think about your relationships and how love plays a part in your relationship. We get a little uh, wonky about using that word love. We use it too cavalier and sometimes we take it to, to almost too seriously. Let me, let me explain. I remember um, you know, that, uh, you know, we can say that we love my, oh, I love my car, or I love chocolate, or I, I, uh, I love that, uh, candidate for, for office. Be careful here. I know I'm bumping up against the political times that we are living in right now as we are choosing our, our leaders of our nation and our states, and as well as determining some, uh, some, um, other, uh, items. But friends, here's the deal. Uh, I remember working uh, one time with the church and I was saying, you know, what I want you to do is look at each other right now. It was in the middle of a sermon. Look at each other and say, God loves you. And so do I. 
And so what I heard was more of this, God loves you. And from, you know, you get a little bit weird about it, right? <laughs> well, we need to express our love for others. M. Scott Peck is a hero of mine. He wrote the book, The Road uh, Less Traveled, not the poem by Robert Frost, but The Road Less Traveled. It is a book that was written in the late 70s, actually mid 70s. And uh, he, he's a, he was a psychiatrist and uh, a Christian, uh, a Quaker. And uh, he very much uh, talked about love and faith and the intersections of uh, psychotherapy. And, uh, and uh, he defined love in this way. Love is ultimate concern for another. Simply put, love is ultimate concern for another. <clears throat> he goes into, of course, explaining that, but uh, it's a pretty simple way of looking at love. When you look at a person, even a stranger, the one thing that you can be sure of uh, with the first look upon them as a person before they speak, before they say anything to you, before they treat you in any way, a fair or unfair or good or bad, the one thing you know for certain about them is that Christ died for them, that God loves them, that Jesus loves them, that the Holy Spirit is working on their lives, even though they may not know it. That's the one thing we can be assured of, be assured of for every person who walks the face of this earth, that God loves them, Christ died for them, and the Holy Spirit is, is constantly working on them as a human being. So when you think about that, I want you to recognize that love is important. It binds us together as, as siblings in Christ so that we may be the living body of Christ out in the world, that we would be the very presence of God with the example of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, so that others may know God's compassion and love. Let's pray. Gracious God, help us to be the people you've created us to be. Allow us and inspire us to be freed uh, from that which separates us from us, any sin that is in our way, any misunderstanding of who we are and who you are, so that we may live more fully for you and be the example of Christ in the world for the sake of your kingdom. May it ever be so in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, friends, be blessed. It's Tuesday. Bye-bye. <laughs>